Hello everyone, welcome to IS Baba 60 days rapid revision series for prelims 2022. This is day 12 and we are taking up environment and ecology. So, along with the revision of various map works and revision of biomes, we take up some of the important ones in the current affairs as well. And whenever you revise environment and ecology, so make sure that with the figures, with the maps, so you will revise so that the memory will be enhanced. So, we take up the revision of biomes. So, we start with the tropical forests. So, the equatorial forests, so they are characterized by the formation of canopies and the thick dense forests and the formation of undergrowth. And as the, th the trees are very dense, so we hardly find any big predators here. So, maximum jaguar will be the largest predator in the Amazon forests. So, other predators will be snakes and others. So, insects are the dangerous ones and apart from that, the birds, monkeys and frogs. So, those can be seen here and some of the trees are mahogany, ebony, rosewood. So, these are the hardcore woods that are being found in the tropical forest. Then coming to tropical deciduous. So, these are the ones which are found mainly in the Indian forests. So, here the deciduous forest means. So, in winter season, the trees will shed their leaves, but the forest will not go bald completely. So, here we can see in the figure like only some of the trees. So, they have been shedding. So, all others are intact and moreover, the trees are not as dense as it was in the tropical evergreen forests. And here the last predator is the tiger and apart from that the monkeys, birds, the great hornbill. So all these are present in these. And then we have the temperate evergreen forests. So even in temperate zone we have evergreen forests because so during the winters there the temperate cyclones occur. So here mainly in UK and others so where the rainfall is uh, throughout the year. So we find this temperate evergreen forests. So here we can see the temperate evergreen forest in the picture and this also has a considerable undergrowth and some of the species that are present here are the snakes, the lizards, the salamanders and others. So here with the figure you can understand like they are not shedding the leaves and that's why they are greenish in color. And then we have temperate deciduous. So this is extreme one where at the winter so complete uh, reduction and shedding of leaves occur and the leaves go yellowish and that will be a great scene to look at. So here we can see almost all the leaves they have grown yellowish and here as it is pure temperate and continental climate the winters will be usually colder and almost all the animals which are living here so they will be having the thick skin and fur. So bears, foxes and even the deers and stags we can see they have the furs. So wolf will be the largest predator say for example in Europe so, wolf is the largest predator and just like how we worship the tigers, so wolves are worshipped there and foxes are also present there. And some of the trees are oak, ash and beech. So, these are the temperate trees and ma mainly the soft woods. So, they are present in these forests. And then we have the boreal forests. As and when we move northwards, so some type of forest will be there. So, they are the mixture between the coniferous in the extreme north and also the evergreen uh, temperate deciduous and evergreen forests in the southern parts. So here although the trees are coniferous in nature but not so much of snowfall, snowfall occurs and here we can see the trees which are coniferous but they are a bit greener and the greenery like the grass and shrubs so they are also present in these. And as it is northward and as it is poleward so here also animals they wear the furs, the thick skin and all. So bears and the mouses so all these and even the wolves and fox and owls are present in these forests. So next comes our the grasslands. So grasslands are the ones where the large predators and large herbivorous animals are being found. So savanna grasslands are the tropical grasslands and here we know that that grasses are thick and they are not so nutritious. And here we can see elephants, zebras and giraffes. So these are found and lions and cheetahs. So these are the predators that are present here. Okay. And then comes the temperate grasslands. So these are having the short and nutritious grasses. So here we can see the short and nutritious grasses and to eat these most of the herbivores like the horses, then the wild beasts, then the wild cattle, buffaloes. So all these they throng here and here the major herbivorous animals are the wild beasts, then impalas, then others including the rhinos and zebras are present and the lions are the greatest predators. So Tanzania, Londolosi, all these forests, they contain the predators that is the lions. So they are the hotspots of lions and then comes the deserts. So here desert means the hot deserts and cold deserts. So hot deserts are basically arid in nature and here the oryx and camels and others are being found in these regions. And but obvious the cactus and the thorny bushes are present in the desert. And then we come for the cold deserts. So cold desert comes very next to the coniferous. So after Siberian forest in the north. So 
we will get the cold deserts and even in Himalayas if we reach the northernmost or the topmost. So, here we will get the cold deserts. So, yaks and the snow leopards and the Tibetan antelopes and the murkors. So, all these are present in these. So, all these pictures have been given here and the snowfall is the important precipitation in the cold desert. Okay, so these are some of the biomes and then come to next the Montrix record and India. So, Montrix record is maintained along with the Ramsar uh, record, but here the Montrix record contains only those Ramsar wetlands which are endangered and which are being threatened with the various pollution and other anthropogenic interferences. So, here the Montrix record was once asked in prelims. So, make sure that we remember that it is a part of Ramsar, but only those wetlands which are in danger that are being present. And coming to India, so we had three wetlands in the Mantrux record. So, that is the Kyolodio Ghana wetland, Loktok Lake and the Chilika. But however, Chilika was removed in 2002 and now only the two that is Kyolodio Ghana and Loktok Lake are present in this Mantrux. And then coming to the map work of those. So, here we have the Kyolodio Ghana. So, very near to it, the Yamuna River and Chambal River flow and they will meet together here and the Kyolode Ghana is very nearer to Agra, Fatehpur Sikri and other places. So, do the map work like this, you will remember. And then we have the Loktak Lake. Loktak Lake is in the middle of Manipur and very next to the border, the Chinwin River is flowing. So, Chinwin River that flows in the Myanmar. So, we will remember and Impal. So, remember Impal is very nearer to this place. Okay. So, the Loktak Lake and then the Kebul Lamjavo National Park, then the Bro Antler Deers. So, all these they become important in these. And then we have the Chilika Lake. So, Chilika Lake lies very south of Mahanadi River and to the north of Rushikulya River. So, in between these two, it lies in the Indian map. And very next to the Chilika Lake, we have Kalikota Forests. And very north of this, we have Satkosia Reserve. So, remember Satkosia here, which is present. Then come to next Great Barrier Reefs in danger list. So, UNESCO is planning to put the Great Barrier Reefs of Australia in the in danger list. So, what is the in danger list of UNESCO? So, as per the article 114 of UNESCO, so in danger list means those ecological hotspots which were listed in the World Heritage Sites, but for the reasons for which they have been listed, the same reason is under threat. Say for example, some national park is being listed in the World Heritage Site for its endemism. That means so many endemic species are present in there. But if those endemic species are being killed, then but obvious, so that will be in danger. So UNESCO will put such ones into the in danger list. So here the in danger list is maintained by UNESCO. So mark this, that is important for prelims. And till now, no Indian places have been listed in the in danger list. So we have so many world heritage sites in UNESCO. So out of them, we don't have any of the places in the in danger list. Okay. So Remember the UNESCO in danger list and remember that India does not have any place here. And then four more Ramsar sites from India. So, this year four more Ramsar sites were added from India. So, what are they? They are the Thol and Vadwana wetlands from Gujarat and Sultanpur and Bindavas from Haryana. So, here we have the Thol. So, Thol is very nearer to Ahmedabad and Sabarmati river that flows very nearer to it. So, make sure that any other important place. So, here goes a canal that links the Sabarmati river to the northern part. Okay. So, here Anadej and Chekla other uh, cities are being present. So, mark whichever are important and revise them. And then we have the Vadwan lake. So, Vadwan lake. So, that is present very nearer to Bogavo river. And then it is very near to Nal Sarovar Lake also. So, Nal Sarovar, Nal Sarovar, another wetland. So, we remember these two things in these. And then we have the Sultanpur, Sultanpur. But obvious, it is nearer to the uh, Delhi Haryana border. And here we can see the Sultanpur and the Delhi border and Batsa and other any important places which are present here. So, you can remember Manesar is very next to these. Then come to next, we have the the Bindavas bird sanctuary. So, Bindavas is present here again in Ariana and here we can see Fatehpuri, Hasanpur and other important places. So, in middle it is present. So, we do not have any other important places other than some of the industrial place. So, Bindavas it is present. It is a city also along with these. And then we have Behler Turtle Conservation Award. So, what is this? It is 
co-presented by Turtle Sur Survival Alliance and then IUCN and SSC Tortoise and Freshwater Turtle Specialist Group. So we have so many NGOs that are present here. So remember TSA, IUCN and SSC and the TFT SG. And this is not presented by any of the United Nations group. So that if you understand, so that is more than sufficient here. Then Indian biologist Shailendra Singh has been awarded the Behle Turtle Conservation Award. And it was for bringing three critically endangered turtle conservation species back from brink of extinction. And the award is a major annual international award honoring the excellence in field of Chilonian conservation. So Chilonian means the turtles and the tortoise. So whoever are indulged in these only, so they are given these. So not all conservationists are given, only those who are conserving the tortoise and turtles, they are being awarded. Then it is widely considered the Nobel Prize for turtle conservation. And what are the species that Shailendra Singh he conserved was the red crowned roof turtle and then northern river terrapin or the Batagur Baska and then the black soft shell turtle that is Nilsonia nigrisans. So remember the scientific names also Batagur Kachuga, Batagur Baska and Nilsonia nigricans or nigrisans. So any pronunciation. So here we can see all those turtles. Okay. So the first one that is the red crown roof turtle is here and northern river terrapin is here and the soft shell turtle that is this one. So remember with figures that would be helpful. Then India's first dugong conservation reserve. Government of Tamil Nadu will set up India's first dugong conservation reserve in the Park Bay and about the conservation river reserve the, in, the information are the conservation reserve will cover an area of 500 kilometers. The proposed conservation area has the highest concentration of dugongs in the country. So this part the Park Bay that is the highest one so we remember that. Then the reserve will span the northern part of the Park Bay from Adiram Patnam from Amma Patinam. So Adiram Patinam and Amma Patinam. So these two will remember and then it is set up as a part of Kampa Dugong Recovery Project. So under the compensatory afforestation program. So under this program it is being implemented. So we remember here. So coming to a brief description on dugong. So this is a herbivorous animal. This is also called as the sea cow. So UPSC has already asked the question regarding dugong here and the conservation status, the IUCN vulnerable status and sites appendix 1 and as per the Wildlife Protection Act, it is under schedule 1. So it is strictly banned from hunting as per the Wildlife Protection Act. And then come to next Mura, Drava and Danube. So UNESCO has designed, designated Mura, Drava and Danube as the world's first five country biosphere reserve. So this is a biosphere reserve that is recognized by UNESCO under Man and Biosphere Program but it extends to five nations. So that is the speciality and this is home to several animals and birds. So that is the white tailed eagle and then the little tern. So here we can see the little tern and then the black stock. So this is the black stock and otters. So otters we can see here. Beavers. Beavers are the ones which have the strong teeth we can, which can cut down even the trees and the sturgeons. Sturgeons are a species of fish. And then coming to the map of this. So here the five nations are Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, Hungary and Serbia. So these five nations they form this Murad, Drava, Danube river. So you can always get a question on what are the nations that are involved in this. So those things better remember with any of the mnemonic. So AHS, uh, yes, C. So AHSSC. So this you can remember. Then come to next sea cucumber. Recently Indian Coast Guard has seized two tons of sea cucumber as banned marine species in Gulf of Mannar. So in the Gulf of Mannar, so they have seized the sea cucumber and these are banned from trading but however the smuggling goes on because these are very much important for production of various chemicals and these are also important for production of the calcium and then they are crucial in maintaining the ecological balance in the ocean habitats and the main byproducts of the sea cucumber is calcium carbonate and this is essential for the survival of coral reefs and also for the industrial usages of the calcium carbonate these sea cucumbers are being hunted and they are smuggled. Then they act like garbage collectors of the ocean world and they recycle the nutrients. So we can also say these are filter feeders as well. And then the IUCN red list. So here we have the brown sea cucumber which is endangered and the black spotted sea cucumber which is least concerned. Then the blue sea cucumber that is data deficient and in the wildlife protection act it is in the schedule 1. And some of the conservation efforts that is in 2020, Lakshadweep Islands administration created the world's first conservation area for sea cucumbers. So remember Lakshadweep's effort and then 
come to next beaches so kovalam in tamil nadu and eden in puducherry so blue flag certification so this has given the blue flag certification for the kovalam and eden beach so who will give this blue flag certification and what are the beaches that have already got blue flag certification in india so they become important so here we have the shivrajpur beach then gogla beach then bogave beach then miramar beach then padubidri and kasarko beach and then bangaram beach then koppad beach kovalam beach eden beach then radhanagar beach rushikonda beach and golden beach of odisha so these have the blue flag certification blue flag means here they are the clean beaches so that is what it means then the certification is accorded by the denmark based foundation for environment and education so it is not presented by any united nations organization it is presented by an ngo that is denmark based foundation for environment and education and then it is being according the blue flag certification on the basis of four major criteria that is environmental education and information if they give any unique environmental information and then the bathing water quality so what is the water quality of the beach and then environment management and conservation if the conservation efforts are good and then safety and other services if they have been taken up and then come to next the park based scheme so here the park based scheme the very scheme itself is confusing so that's why i brought it here but it is a simple scheme that is the union government is considering increasing the unit cost of deep sea fishing vessels under the park based scheme to make it more attractive for fisher folk so it is like we are going for the bottom trawling and we are damaging the fish ecosystem here and the government wants to avoid this bottom trawling and they want to make the fishers to go to the deep sea and fish there and it is a kind of training for the fishers to fish in the deep sea and the scheme is for diversification of the trawl fishing boats from park street into the deep sea fishing and it encourages all the fishermen to do so and here we can see what is the uh, trawling fishing so bottom trawling means the net will be put in the very bottom of the ocean and when this is put even the small small uh, fishlets so they will be tracked into the fish net and we will not get any opportunity for uh, increasing the size of these small small fishers uh, before that itself we will hunt them so that itself is a great ecological damage and we have the right only to fish the adult fishers so if you fish the small fish lets so that will again it will hamper the sustainability of the fishing industry so we have to stop this bottom trawling so that is why this park based scheme then the census of indus river dolphin so here the indus river dolphin so that is about to be uh, counted and that is being implemented by government of india and the scientific name of this indus river dolphin is the plant platanista gangetica minor so gangetica major is gangetic river dolphin gangetica minor is the indus river dolphin so here we can see the picture of indus river dolphin so this doesn't have a proper vision and that is why it locates its prey and others with the help of the echolocation just like the bats do and then some of the informations so from the census that is census will also encourage the community to engage in the counting process and then if there are any hot spots near any village so in nearby those villages if there are more population of indus river dolphin that village will be discovered declared as the model villages and then the bias dolphin mitras so in the river bias if there are any volunteers who are willing to conserve dolphins so they are being declared as the bias dolphin mitras and then dolphin ecotourism will also be encouraged along with the census so here remember community engagement then model villages then bias dolphin mitras and dolphin ecotourism areas and then coming to a brief description on the indus river dolphin so it is a freshwater dolphin but obvious and it is endangered and until recently it was believed that these dolphins were endemic to pakistan only but in 2007 remnants of these indus river dolphins so they were discovered in punjab's harike wildlife sanctuary or harike wetlands and then indus river dolphins were declared as the state aquatic animal of punjab in 2019 so remember this and here we can see the gangetic dolphin so have a brief comparison between the gangetic and indus river dolphin so gangetic dolphins are bit darker in color and their eyes are bit matured and their mouth is straight it is not curved just like the indus river dolphin and then coming to the important wetlands see friends so whenever you see the wetlands so make sure that you search in the google map and study where and all they actually lie okay so here we have the vular lake and then the hokera wetland and surinsar mansar then somoriri so these surinsar mansar somoriri pongang so so these are the salt lakes and vular lake is a fresh water lake and then we have the pongdam lake 
and then Chandra Tal and Renuka wetlands. So Chandra Tal and Renuka. So these are very much uh, in the mythology for Parshuram and his mother Renuka ji. And then we have the Kanjali wetland, Harike wetland and Ropar wetland, wetlands. So all these come in Punjab Haryana region. And Harike wetland we know that. Harike wetland, Kanjali wetland. So all these are being formed when the Satlej barrage that is Bakranangal dam was constructed. And then we have the Sambar Lake. Sambar Lake is also called as Shakambri Jeel. And in 2021 prelims, we had the questions regarding Kuchuman, Didwana and other wetlands. So all these, they lie very near to Sambar. And then we have Kyolodio Ghana. We saw it right now. Nal Sarovar we saw. Then Boj wetland. So that is present very near to Bhopal. And then we have Kolleru Lake here. And very near to Kolleru Lake. So at the south, we have the Pulikat Lake also. And then very near to Pulikat, we have Guindi Lake. And then we have the Chilika Lake here and then Bita Kanika. So that is present here in Odisha. And then we have the Sundarbans. Sundarbans also carries more wetlands. And then we have the Deepor Beel. So Beel, Deepor Beel and then the Bogi Beel. So all these are the lakes. So Beel means lake in Assam language. And then we have the Loktak Lake, then Rudra Sagar. Friends, Tripura is having good number of Shaivites. So Bhakta of Shiva are more. So whenever Rudra comes, so make sure that you will take a crude guess for Tripura. Okay, so Tal means that is Himachal and Uttarakhand. Whenever Tal comes, so those areas we can take a guesswork. And apart from that, in the south, we have the Vembanad Lake, Sastam Kota Lake. So, Kota means lake in Kerala or Malayali language. And then Ashtamudi Lake and then Point Kalamir. So, this is present in Tamil Nadu. And apart from that, whenever we get any other wetlands in use, so make sure that you will see the map, Google map of this, not just the Indian map and search them. And some of the recent uh, uh, wildlife sanctuaries in news are, that is the Bakira Wildlife Sanctuary in Uttar Pradesh. So, I have brought the Google map of Bakira Sanctuary here and very near to it, the Rapti River flows and this Rapti River, it joins Gagra River. So, these two flow here and somewhere here, these will flow and it is very near to Gorakhpur. So, remember this and this is the hub of Asian flyway species. So, all those Asian birds which come uh, during the winters, so they will stay here and they will take some relief and they go back to Siberia. So, Siberia will be very cold during winters. So, that is why. And then, Kajidia Wildlife Sanctuary in Gujarat. So, here we have Kajidia very near to the coast. And Kajidia Bird Sanctuary is also present. And very near to it, we have Jamnagar and also we have Dichada Lake. So, remember Dichada Lake, Kajidia and also Jamnagar, Gujarat. And then we have the Kabartal Wetland. So, Kabartal Wetland or the Kabartal. So, is present here near Bihar. Okay, so very near to it, we have the Budi Gandak. So, Budi Gandak or Burhi Gandak. So, whatever we want, we can pronounce. And we have the Kosi River here. So, both of them, they will meet in this place. And we also have the Great Ganges. So, all these Buri Gandak, Kosi, they will meet Ganges somewhere in the eastward. So, remember the Kabartal here and remember Buri Gandak. So, that will flow very nearer to it. And then we have the Asan Conservation Reserve. So, Asan Conservation River is on Asan River itself. So, here we have the Yamuna River and here we can see the Himachal Haryana border and the other two rivers will join this Yamuna River. So, this is the Giri River and here we have the Asan River and here we will get the Asan Dam or the Asan Barrage. So, near this Asan Barrage, the Asan Conservation Lake is present and also remember the Kalesar Wildlife Sanctuary very nearer to it. And then Thimli Range, so a small mountain range is present here. And then come to next, the con Lake Conservation Program in India. So here earlier we had the National Lake Conservation Program. So that was since 2001 and this differentiated a lake and a wetland. So whichever wetland has a depth of 5 feet and less than that. So that is called a wetland and whichever wetland had 5 feet and above depth. So they were called as the lake because the lakes have significant depth here. And the for the wetlands, the National Wetland Conservation Program was taken up and the National Wetland Conservation Program. So that happened in two phases that is management action plan and research projects. So the funds were distributed even for the management of the wetlands and even if someone is taking up any research activities. So even for them, the funds were provided. But later in 2015, the national plan was uh, merged and the national plan for conservation of aquatic ecosystem was found. And now this is the only program. So it got merged and now both the wetlands and lakes. So they are being looked after by this program and this works under Ministry of Environment. 
Okay. So it was formulated in 2015 by merging the National Lake Conservation Plan and the National Wetlands Conservation Program. Okay. So these are some of the map works and pictures. So make sure that you will enhance the memory and then study. And then coming to the last part friends. So study is a passion. Study is not a confusion. Study is that which you do as a hobby and study is one which you do happily. Study is not one which you do hard. It is not that which give you frustration. It is that which gives you satisfaction. So knowledge earning is one which will give you the bliss. So experience that bliss and immaterial of your results, whether you clear IAS or not clear IAS. But obvious, if you enjoy that bliss, so one day you will be on the top of the world. So maybe you will be much more than an IAS or an IPS officer. So do it all the very best from my side. Good luck friends.